Hello and welcome to another whiteboard testing video. It's been a while. I can only apologise, there's a lot going on and these things haven't made it to the top but I'm trying to do a few more things that I love and enjoy and getting sharing some content that's ideally in a quicker form than uh, writing which uh, takes me a while. So today we're going to talk about sacred. So sacred is a mnemonic um, that I created a while back when I was trying to coach some members of my team about the things they need to consider when designing automated tests, automated checks. Um, and then now it's, um, it becomes the basis of part of um, the three day course that I teach with Mark Winteringham called Automation and Testing. So I want to explain what sacred is, uh, what each of the letters mean, uh, and hopefully it can maybe uh, help yourselves uh, creating your own um, automated tests and checks. So, uh, as you can see, it's sacred. Uh, the first iteration of this, um, I went with scared, uh, which isn't as appealing when you're trying to teach people. I literally, my vocabulary didn't really um, help me out, so I went on to a uh, Scrabble uh, calculatory thing, and sacred came up, and I thought, you know what? talking about your test being sacred and the value they have to the team. Yeah, it sounded like it fitted a bit better. So we went with sacred, um, but also it kind of goes in a logical flow, which we'll explain now. So the S, the S stands for state management. And this is basically, to me, this is one of the most important things you can automate. This is, I'm talking here about setting up data, all the different variations of data you need, deploying an environment, configuring it, setting up config flags. These are a huge part of having stable, reliable automated checks. And you don't get that by learning Selenium. You get that by understanding the testability of your system, understanding the skills on the team, talking to developers, talking to um, DevOps engineers, if you have them, um, talking to product owners to try and make your products more testable. So therefore, if we can do that, we should be then able to build little hooks, APIs, and to start being able to create data on the fly or configure environments on the fly. But essentially we want to put our applications in the right state, ready for the um, check that we then want to run. So this is, what st this is what the S stands for, it stands for state. And by the way, this is one of the hardest things to get right and it needs team effort. But if you can get this right, you'll probably start to see more stable um, and faster executions and more targeted on what it was you were trying to do. All right, the A. The A used to stand for algorithm, but to be honest, it sounds a bit boring. Um, so I recently switched it to actions. So this is the actions you're now gonna take. So we've put the system in the right state, and now we wanna do some actions. We wanna trigger some behavior of the system. Uh, you know, it could be pro uh, complete a purchase, open a lesson, whatever it is, could be hit an API. Um, whatever we're trying to do, this is now where we take our actions. So as I said, commonly any type of, any type of UI automation, any clicks, types, waiting, etc. What we're trying to do to trigger some behavior. Or in the API space, we're going to fire some APIs uh, and get some responses back. Or in the JavaScript space, um, you know, we're going to call some um, we're going to call some components and see what state they end up in. So that's the actions. And then the C stands for codified Oracle. So this is what we tend to talk about as assertions. But in obviously in the, some of the testing space, uh, we talk about exploratory testing a lot, and within that, we talk about oracles. Oracles being how we know if something's right or wrong, or if there's a problem here. And as skilled testers, or anyone doing any testing, their head's full of oracles. We have them all the time. You have a conversation in the hallway, it will update your oracles. You have a, you have a grooming session. Um, you have a free Omega session, you read some documentation, you look at someone else's website, you're getting them all the time. But when we put them inside an automated check, we codify them, we lock them in place. And therefore it's very important to, 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 to create a very good assertion. And it's based on understanding the oracles that you used. Yes, there's some text on the screen and it's got the right price, but is it the right font? Is it the right color? Is it in the right part of the screen? The API returned these values, but did it also not return these other values? So this is where we have to then take in our test design skills and create very good oracles. But if again, if you get them right, when they pass or fail or detect change, you're gonna know what it means. And that's the skill of getting a good oracle. Um, so those first ones might sound really common and that's because 
they're nothing new. Um, none of it, to be honest, there's never anything new really these days. But um, there's a few other examples that exist out there. So obviously very common at the moment with the world of BDD and Gherkin-based tools, given when then. So given the system's in the right state, when I do these actions, then the system should show me this behavior. And from the unit testing world, arrange, act, and then assert. Again, very common, and I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, it's however, the next three are where I see some of the automation, a lot of sedets and test engineers doing uh, needs some slightly more focus. So then we move on to the R, and the R's for reporting, and it takes on two forms. The first one is, where do your results need to go? So all your scripts have run, they're fast as lightning, you're dead proud. Where do the results go? Do you need to punt them into a CI system? Do you need to have some sort of integration with a test management tool? Um, hopefully you don't, but if you do. Um, do you need um, to like ping them on Slack? Do you want to get emails when they fail? Basically, where do you, who needs to be told when these things fail? So that's where we have to factor that into our design. If there isn't a CI yet, you're not going to run all, this, all these automated checks locally. That's not, that doesn't scale. So therefore, you might have to find the skills to go and build a, um, some sort of pipeline or CI. But again, you want to involve the team in doing that. And then the other, the, other R, the other side of reporting is when checks fail, we don't want to be spending you know, lots of time investigating why they failed. Obviously, we want to go and look, we want to explore. And um, we say, you know, it's an invitation to explore when an automated tester check fails. But we can, get the, we can get the computer to do a lot for us. I call it giving your robot a voice. So when a UI script fails, I want a screenshot. Maybe I want a dump of the HTML. Uh, maybe I want to know what's in the console. Maybe I want the logs from the actual system. If I call an API, maybe I want the whole of the JSON or the XML. I want to know what headers were there. I want to know if there's a transaction ID that I can then go and look up in another part of the system. So I want, I want as much information as I can to speed up that debugging process. So when it detects a change, we can quickly work out if that change matters or not. And then the E, the E stands for execution. Where are we running these tests? I have written some, I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but I, I reckon every single one of you has done this. I've written lots of automated checks that run perfectly on my machine. You know, a nice, powerful MacBook, uh, nothing else running on there, nice and smooth, no one else is on the environment I was working on. I commit it into the CI, it fails. All my weights are off, all the, the, the version nuts are off. So where are we executing this, these automated checks? So therefore designing that in. If you know it's going to be run on multiple environments, then you have to design to be able to configure those environments. If you know they're going to be run headlessly on a CI or wherever they may be, make sure they work before you commit them. So think about where you're going to execute your automated checks. And then finally, the D, deterministic, it's the goal. Lots of talk out there about flaky automation, but as I spoke at Selenium Conference a few years ago, they're not flaky. We, you designed them to be that way. So they're doing exactly what you told them. So if you've seen flakiness or what we associate as flakiness, perhaps this is an opportunity to go and improve one of these areas. Perhaps your state's off and your data's getting misaligned. Perhaps your actions aren't right. They're not happening in the right order because you're not waiting for the right things. Um, or whatever it is, try and pinpoint which bit it is uh, to get this goal of them being deterministic. So, there you go. As I said, the first three letters tie very much to establish things that are out there given when men arrange act to cert. Um, but I adopted, I created sacred because I wanted to offer a little bit more. So let me know in, in the comments, is sacred useful to you? Uh, would you add, would you change any letters? Let's have a conversation. Let's see what we can do to improve the world of creating reliable, deterministic um, automated checks. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I am going to do more. I'm at the end of the video now and I'm smiling because I actually enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, if you've not subscribed to the channel, please do. There's a history of videos there. And as I usually say at the start of some of these, this channel is open for everyone. If you've got a camera and a whiteboard and you want to record a video, record it, send it to me along with a bit of description and I'll get it posted on the channel. All right. Thank you for watching and see you all soon. Cheers.